Hello, Luminary. Welcome back to another episode of The Savvy Luminary. I'm so excited today to talk to you about gratitude. Now, for those of us in the United States, we are celebrating our Thanksgiving tomorrow. But I wanted today in this episode to share how gratitude is so important in every facet of our life. So in this little short and sweet episode, I'll be sharing seven ways you can up your gratitude in your life and business. Welcome to the Savvy Luminary Podcast, Astrology for Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Leslie Tagorda, creator of the Astro Brand Method, business astrologer, brand designer, author, and Aquarius boss woman. I help visionary spiritual entrepreneurs and impact makers like you illuminate and amplify your unique star powers so you can be the luminary you were born to be. Well, hello, Luminary. Thank you again for joining me on this short episode because, you know, hopefully <laughs> you are listening while maybe you're preparing your holiday meal or getting some a little on your turkey trot before the holidays for those of us in the United States. But thank you. You know, really, the reason why I'm recording this episode is specifically to thank you. Um, in this season of gratitude, I just wanted to share how I use gratitude in my life and just like my every day and how I practice it. And I want to hear how you practice gratitude. Now, again, this episode is completely dedicated to you because without your enthusiasm and listening, I wouldn't feel so excited to show up twice a week to to record these little snippets and astral guidance and other spiritual guidance in the businesses and the work that we do because I know that you are a spiritual entrepreneur, even if you are not necessarily running a spiritual business, you see your work as part of your spiritual path. So in honor of you, I wanted to share my many thanks, and I wanted to shout out to a recent review because it's been a while since I've read these amazing reviews that pop up on my Apple podcast. So this is from Serena Joyful. I love listening to Leslie's podcast and look forward to each episode. She offers a beautiful interpretation of the stars as well as grounded advice on how to put that star power to use in your business. Combine that with a loving presence and you have a truly remarkable and potent podcast. Thank you, Leslie. Well, thank you, Serena, for this kind review. It's reviews like yours that are really my gift because you're your gift to me just because these reviews enable the podcast to reach even more and more people. And I love hearing the feedback and how this is impacting you in your life and your business. So we are officially in Sagittarius season and, you know, Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter, of course, is all about optimism and luck and vision and, and purpose. But if we come back, we roll back to this place of Sagittarius, which rules higher learning and philosophy, Sagittarius, that access to all of these greater ideals comes from giving gratitude. And so we can think of not just with our um, American holiday with Thanksgiving as a season of gratitude, but also just Sagittarius in general, right? So gratitude, especially in the form of ritual or daily ritual makes Sagittarius and Jupiter so happy. And of course, you know, as a spiritual entrepreneur, just the power of gratitude to elevate your energy. Because what I mentioned before in the last Starcast from Sunday, really what you focus on grows. So even if we're just always looking at these glimmers of hope, even when things feel so bad, not to spiritual bypass, but where we put hope and where we focus on through gratitude, those feelings can grow. Now, this spiritual, emotional, intuitive vision of gratitude and seeing the silver lining and everything also has some data, <laughs> research, and science backing it up. The website Harvard Health has a blurb about gratitude and says, in positive psychology research, 
gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. Ah. Uh. So yes, gratitude like can impact everything, your social, emotional, mental behavior, your physical health, including your immune system, and gives you just an overall sense of well-being. And of course, you know, if you're in an intimate relationship, the more appreciation and gratitude you can share with your loved ones, the more that they appreciate you and that relationship grows stronger. Now, you probably know a little bit me, about me personally by now that I have a lot of Jupiter and I have a lot of Sagittarius in my chart. My um, Aquarius sun is conjunct Jupiter and my moon is in Sagittarius conjunct Neptune. So I've always been this very optimistic, silver lining kind of person, even though I had a pretty tough childhood. Now, gratitude isn't a solve all, but it really lifts your entire energy. So I wanted to share with you seven ways that you can express your gratitude to deepen this elevation of positivity now, and I want to be careful and I want to acknowledge I'm talking about positivity and bringing, lifting our energies, but I don't want to spiritual bypass here. There are a lot of things that are hard in our lives and there might be some traumas that you have experienced for which you really do need extra help. And so, but gratitude can give you a little boost of energy to really help you along your path. So today I wanted to go through seven different ways you can bring in more gratitude in your life and your business. And hopefully some of these you might not have thought of before. So you can add another layer into your gratitude cake for optimal optimism. Now, there are a lot of crazy things in this world, things that are unjust and things that are really painful. And so as we are going through this gratitude, because I, you as a listener, I already know that you as a listener come from a place of privilege. And if we have any sort of privilege, and I know you do, it is our place to offer appreciation and gratitude, especially helping others that might not have the privileges that we have. So number one, gratitude, giving thanks for the land that you currently occupy. Because this episode is aligned with the uh, American, the United States holiday of Thanksgiving, there are a lot of wrong things with Thanksgiving in terms of the, the narrative of, the, of what really happens on that first Thanksgiving. I don't want to go into all of the reasons why this holiday is good or bad, but I want to focus on the gratitude and being thankful and acknowledging the land that you currently occupy. Because unless you're a first person or, um, or a native, you are probably living on land that is, you know, unseceded. Unseceded is a land that was taken unjustly from other people. And for most of us, we are living on that type of land. Now to kind of, it's very complicated to make these things right, but in one way to raise and elevate the energy of the land that you currently occupy is to give gratitude for that land because you are a benefactor from the protections of the spirits of that particular land. And you are also a benefactor of those that have stewarded that land for millennia before you. So in order to give gratitude is first to acknowledge, to ground your feet on that land and thank the spirits of that place and the ancestors of that land. Another thing that you can do is to discover who, if you don't already know, who the first peoples of the land that you currently occupy, who were they? If you Google whose land am I on, you'll see many different resources and websites that can give you more insight as to the people that originally lived where you now live and work. 
for me. I currently live in what is now called San Francisco on the land of the Ramaytush Ohlone, who still live here and run beautiful cultural and land rematriation projects as stewards. It's so beautiful to witness the work that the Ramatush organization does in the city of San Francisco and the Bay Area. The second way of offering gratitude, and I have a sense that a lot of you already do this, is to give gratitude for your ancestors as well as your spirit guides. For those that are no longer here with us in physical form. I, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, our spirit guides, and if you work with spirit guides in your work, remember to always thank them. They, they appreciate it, thanks as much as you do, and also acknowledging your ancestors for all of the work that they have done to lift you to where you are. Today, I wanted to acknowledge in this idea of gratitude for my ancestors and spirit guides, I wanted to share a little story about my paternal grandfather, Isidro Tagorda. He was born in the Philippines and moved to Hawaii in the plantation days. And, you know, he was really a first of his kind. I had no idea how much my grandpa was into self-help and positive mental attitude. I mean, I must have got uh, my love for self-help and, and, and um, spirituality directly from him. So back in Hawaii in like the 1940s and 50s and 60s, most Filipinos that lived there were um, worked on the plantation or were farmers. And I'm not exactly sure the, the real story why my grandpa wasn't working on a plantation, but he actually was working um, at one of the biggest most luxurious shoe stores in Hawaii in like this big international shopping center called Alamoana Center. And so I remember as a little girl, um, my grandpa would go to work every morning and he was always dressed in a really nice suit and he had these really beautiful shoes and he drove this uh, like a Buick, a silver Buick that had this wood paneling. And he always made time to drive me around the block. <laughs> it was like just the sweetest little ritual. He would always drive me around the block um, in Ali Amanu before he would drop me off and then he would go to work at this shoe store. Well, a few years uh, back in 2014, when my grandma passed away, um, she would always tell me stories about grandpa and how when they first met, she liked him of all of her suitor suitors, like my grandma was just like this little firecracker. She was so beautiful. And she had all of these suitors and she picked my grandpa because she said that he was so kind. And when I see like pictures of him smiling, I can see the, the twinkle in his eyes of kindness that I actually see in my own son's eyes. I feel like they have a very similar smile, um, my son as well as my grandpa. And so when my grandma passed away, I was going through some of her old books. She had like these stacks and stacks of encyclopedias. And, you know, I never realized how lucky my, my grandma and my grandpa were compared to a lot of their friends and their families in Hawaii um, being of Filipino descent because my grandpa again worked in this big shopping mall as a shoe salesman in this really high-end shoe place. So my grandpa, I remember my grandma would even like share stories about my grandpa um, because one of his important clients was the one and only Elvis Presley. And my grandpa would sell shoes to Elvis and Hawaii is one of Elvis's like top destinations. So he was in Hawaii a lot. And this one shoe store, for whatever reason, carried all of these like really high end luxury shoes from all over the world. And so Elvis would beeline to Alamoana Center. I wish I remembered what the store was called. He would beeline to Alamoana Center and talk to my grandpa. And my grandpa would like, you know, get him the right shoes. And Elvis would give my grandpa like concert tickets and my grandma would go to these Elvis concert tickets and they just like absolutely loved it. So 
going back to um, when my grandma passed away back in 2014 and I was going through all of her books, I found these like really old um, self-help books. Um, I, I don't, if you're watching the video version, you can see like these old books and they they have that beautiful old book smell. Like I, I, I love books, so <laughs> they make me kind of giddy. I wish you could smell these old books. Um, this book is written by, you know, like back in like the, the 40s, 50s, 60s, and even back in the 20s, there were like some really big, um, I guess you would call them titans of industry who were writing these self-help books around success, like Napoleon Hill and Dale and Andrew Carnegie. And so I found these books and I was like, I was asking my father, I was like, who are these books from? Like, what are all these books? Because there's this book that I'm holding here called um, Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. You know, in the, in the writing, this book, what, when is this book written? I think it's like 19... I think this one is one of the later ones. This one was published in 1960. I can't tell if it's like a republish, but this is written by Napoleon Hill. And this book is all about where the road to achievement begins. So I was asking my dad, who are, who are all these books from? And he's like, oh, these are your grandpa's books. And I was like, huh, very interesting because all of these books talk about having a positive mental attitude, being gracious, having so much gratitude and showing your appreciation and always looking for silver linings, like basic things that we just little, little need nudges to remember to always look at the, um, at, you know, just kind of the highest level of energy. And so I got to thinking about my grandfather's success now as an adult back in 2014. And I was like, oh, no wonder my grandpa was so well suited to sell high-end shoes um, in this cosmopolitan shopping center to celebrities. And, you know, just from his like really, really humble means, you know, leaving a village in the Philippines when he was a teenager to go work on um, plantations, but then really making something of himself. And because of his success in the shoe stores, he was able to um, support and finance a lot of his relatives coming to the States from the Philippines. And so for this, when you're giving gratitude to your ancestors and spirit guides, I'm dedicating my gratitude to my grandpa Isidro Tagorda and for his love uh, that I inherited from him, his love of self help and spirituality in the form of these beautiful old books. Now, the third type of gratitude, of course, is for your family and your friends, all of your personal connections. And so this holiday season, I hope that you're able to share your love and your gratitude with them. And, you know, even thinking about one of the things that I do a lot in my astrology readings is that I'm constantly working with my clients to reframe experiences or to reframe archetypal energies, things that we might judge. So for example, um, I shared a little bit earlier that I had a, a pretty rough childhood because my mom hurt her back chronically when I was about five. And after about, I was, since I was five, there was really no space for little Leslie because everything was about my mom and her pain at that time. And one of the things that I've noticed with my family and my friends, especially from you know, my mom's family, um, they always noticed that always were amazed at how, quote unquote, well, I turned out despite my mom's addictions and, you know, just kind of different experiences, challenging experiences that I had with my mom. But I never really saw it that way because what I am super grateful for is that when I was five years old and I saw my mom going through all of this pain and all of these challenges, what I learned at a very, very early age that happiness was a choice. I had no idea about self-help books. I didn't even know from like my grandpa about like this positive mental attitude, but I knew in like my soul that we get to choose our own destiny that even if we're handed a bad, um, you know, bad card, so to say, like with my mom and her back aches, that it wasn't like this life sentence of negativity that we could choose. And so I thank my mom for that 
for raising me in the way that she did, even though she apologizes to me for not being a great mom. But I learned so much and I am who I am today because of those challenging experiences that I decided to at five years old to reframe, to see the pain of my mom and to decide that that wasn't going to be my life path no matter what. And so in the um, Eclipse episode or in the email that I shared um, last week, and if you, you know, if you get my email newsletter, I shared a story that you know, last eclipse season, I had this like debilitating back pain. I don't even know where this back pain came from. Like, I don't remember like, you know, stretching my back or hurting it in any kind of way, but I could not stand up. I couldn't move without this like sharp shooting pain. And I had to go to Hawaii to take care of my mom. And I didn't think I was going to make it, but the entire time that I had that back pain, I was just focusing on, you know, how I needed to lift my energy, how I needed to um, give thanks for every time that I could breathe without any shooting pain, to give thanks for being able to stretch, for being able to walk. Um, And I remember just kind of laughing through the pain oftentimes because it was so intense and just deciding that it was not going to get the best of me. And so I really am grateful for um, the relationship that I had with my mom at that time because I learned how to choose to be positive even amongst challenge. The fourth way that I wanted to appreciate and share ideas of gratitude was for your business, for all the relationships in your business, whether these are your co-creators and your colleagues or the beautiful communities that you've built or that you are part of that support you. And of course, your clients, because yeah, where would we be in our businesses if we didn't have colleagues, community and clients? And so earlier in this episode, I dedicated this episode to you, my beautiful community, because Luminary, I would not be here without you. And for all of my clients that have paid me through the years, who I've supported, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me and trusting me to guide you. Now, number five, this gratitude, this this one seems really, really, really obvious about gratitude for your current abundance and your physical needs. Now, we could talk about, you know, like maybe you're still living paycheck to paycheck, or maybe you wish you lived in a bigger house, or maybe you wish that you could um, afford sushi on a weekly basis or something like that, right? There's always something that we, we desire more and more of. But to kind of ground it in and to already create this energy of abundance, we need to be really abundant for what we currently have. Again, I know that I'm speaking to privileged listeners here. We get to be gracious for the environment that we currently live in. Likely you have fresh air, um, a clean house. Likely you have access to fresh water, to fresh food. Likely you have access to clean clothing, to the ability to clean yourself at home. And, you know, like, I know this is not necessarily a physical thing, but if you're listening, you have access to the internet and to Wi-Fi. And sometimes we forget that these things that we take for granted for, right, just like being able to turn on the tap water and get fresh water or to be able to like order pizza and have it ultimately delivered, not everybody in this world has it so easy. So be grateful for the privileges that should be rights for everyone because they are not rights for everyone. Number six, gratitude for your health and abilities. Again, this comes back to this idea of privilege. We all have privilege somehow in our health and our abilities. Maybe you are a fully able-bodied person. Oh my goodness, give gratitude for that. Maybe you um, have privilege of um, a a pale skin color or a thin or normal sized body. Maybe you have the privilege of being able to read without dyslexia or to write 
really well or to hear or to see all of these things related to your physical body and your health and your abilities. Today, take note, take stock of all of the privileges that you have in your health and your abilities and your talents and be grateful for them. Not everybody has your abilities or your health privileges. Lastly, gratitude for how you impact others and add value. This is a little bit echoing the um, an Instagram reel that I posted last week for the eclipse where Celeste Brooks had recommended we add a, um, that we write a love letter to ourselves. And in this love letter, I was suggesting in that reel, I was suggesting about how do we add value? And so I want you to start taking notice of how you add value, even if it seems like something little. For example, your emotional care or labor. Uh, we have to stop dismissing emotional care and labor. And you need to see how much value you add, whether you're, you know, cooking pancakes for your family or cooking dinner or washing clothes, you have added value because you have made people's, you have made things easier in people's lives, whether you hugged your crying child or your partner, that adds value to their emotions. Whether you helped your customer with a big or a small result, you added value by making their lives better. It maybe you made a neighbor smile by sweeping their sidewalk or their lawn or picking up some mail for them. Or you made a collaborator's life easier by giving them some tips or pointers um, or creating some opportunities to work together. Or maybe like Serena did for me earlier, she left a positive review for my work. So maybe when was the last time that you've left a positive review for people in your life, like for the vendors um, in your life or people that inspire you? Leave a book review, leave a podcast review, leave um, a, a love note somehow anywhere like on Google or Yelp or something. Share how somebody else's work has impacted you and then you will pass on that value. Ah, so I know I'm preaching to the choir here. I know that you all already are practicing gratitude and abundance, and hopefully I've shared a few more ways that you can share gratitude and abundance. So I wanted to invite you, remember I'm having a special um, book party, a book birthday party and Sagittarius Eclipse New Moon Ceremony. And you are invited because I am so grateful for you. This event is completely free and it's on Friday, December 3rd at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. Please, please, please join me and Natalie Miller in our circle. We will be toasting the one-year anniversary of my book, Star Powered Brand. And if you could be a dear, please head on to Amazon and leave a review for my book. Um, I'm going to be revealing what the new moon eclipse wants you to believe in to bring in your best 2022 yet. We'll of course be discussing 2022 and the stars and discussing all of the big themes and the highlights. And Natalie and I will be sharing our year ahead star powered business planning tools. You know, I love my prizes, so there will be raffle prizes. And during that party, I'm going to be picking two raffle winners to receive a live mini solar eclipse reading from me and a box of Written in the Stars Kokok chocolates, the single origin heirloom chocolates created by Filipina chocolatier in San Francisco. Oh, I just love Carol's chocolates. So please join me and Natalie for this party. Head on over to the Savvy Luminary dot com forward slash new moon to get your free RSVP and remember to enter the raffle by leaving a review for my book star powered brand on Amazon. Now Amazon takes about five days for these reviews to be published. So if you want to be entered for that raffle, I'll have to be able to see that review on um, Amazon being published. So 
please, please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, let me know which gratitude tip most um, was something new for you or you had the most ahas. So happy Thanksgiving for those of you that celebrate in the United States and have a wonderful week. Oh, Another thing, be on the lookout for a bonus episode that drops on Friday announcing a solar eclipse flash sale. I have something super exciting just for you. All right, Luminary, I'll talk to you on Friday for that bonus episode. Stay tuned. If you love this podcast, please consider doing me a favor and heading over to Apple iTunes and leaving me a rating and review. Your rating and review helps this humble podcast get seen and found by more listeners like you. Please share the love.